Hits Weekend on KBC Channel 1. Naona hakika msikiliza. Kiupana na kiurefu zaidi. Kwa na imani na yeye atafanya. Hata rudi tena kutafuta pesa zingine hapa. Kulingana na mimi ninavumjua mimi yule ni mpambe. Yule apenda upambe ajabu. Kusu ile hata sitia shaka. Upambe tu hii nyumba nitaipimpu hii. <laughs> Eni mama akifika hapa anajiona kama yuko paradise hiyo. This weekend on KBC Channel 1. Wiki hii kwenye mkulima tutamfuga kuku ndani ya greenhouse. Kisha tukuze blackberry. Mkulima ajue kwamba wakati unapanda utizame sana ili unapotumbukiza kijiti kile au cutting kwenye udongo uwe makini uhakishe kwamba zile nodes zinaangalia upande wa juu especially matawi vile yanamea yao yanaangalia upande wa juu Ungana nasi Jumapili saa 9:30 hapa KBC Channel 1 is one of your most valued investments. Get your domestic package insurance cover. This includes house and its contents, domestic servants, owners and tenants legal liability. Now you know. IRA promoting insurance, protecting the insured. Can you believe we get to come out here every day? Yeah. Why is she stopping? Nothing out there. Not yet. Only 45 seconds on the clock and no set waves on the horizon. This contest may be over, Bo. The Board of Trustees of Telposta Pension Scheme and Fund advises all members that the 2020-2021 AGM shall be held virtually on Monday 31st May 2021 from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. The event will be live on KBC Channel 1 TV, YouTube and Facebook pages. Kupata skiza tunhi waibrania kuminatatu nane. Dial star 811 star 963 hash. Yesu Kristo ni yule yule, jana, leo na hata milele. Wahibrania 13 mstari wa nane. Ili kupata skiza tune hiyo ya Waibrania 13 nane, dial star 811 star 963 hash. Star 811 star 963 hash. Je, umeomoka? Kama hujaomoka kwenye Quickbin ndio mambo yote. Hapa tuko na fridge, kodi yake ni CM. Tuko na gas cooker, kodi yake ni CK. Tuko na TV, kodi yake ni TV. Tuko na simu aina ya Samsung ni SM ama Oppo ni Oppo. My friend, mahali popote unanitizama, eka hizo kodi zake kisha utume kwa 4032353. 4032353 alafu utakuwa unaomoka na hizi bidhaa kumbuka kwenye quickly ni bila bora zaidi kwa bei ya chini kwa chini
A very good afternoon to you. My name is Daniel Wahome and welcome to Channel One Lunchtime News on this 29th day of May. The year it is 2021 as we head towards the Madaraka Day week that's starting on Monday. Our sign language interpreter this afternoon is Byron Abuli. And on to our first story where uncertainty looms over the venue of this year's Madraka Day celebrations as the organizers grapple with the soaring COVID-19 cases in Kisumu County. State House spokesperson Kanze Dena has revealed that talks are ongoing between the Ministry of Health and local leaders to settle on an ideal venue between the newly built Jomo Kenyatta International Stadium or the State Lodge in Kisumu. Already plans have been made to have uh, plans to have members of the public follow the event at three different venues within the lakeside town have been scrapped as part of containment measures. President Uhuru Kenyatta is expected in Kisumu tomorrow. On Monday, he will be joined by Burundian President Everest Ndayishimiye, who is expected in the country for a two day state visit. And as part of that story, the president's itinerary includes uh, listing the various projects that will be there where he will be opening complete national government projects and inspect ongoing initiatives and also launch new projects there. And the president will be joined on the tour by several young uh, leaders, uh, including uh, the Right Honorable Raila Molo Odinga and also the governor of Kisumu County, Professor Peter Anyang Nyongo. So Samona Chola will be giving us more details of that story. Let's move on to an, one thing that touches on women. Kenya joined the world in marking the Menstrual Hygiene Day under the theme Action and Investment in Menstrual Hygiene. Approximately 800 million women and girls across the globe face barriers to properly manage themselves during menstruation, which calls for a world free of period poverty and stigma. Menstrual Hygiene Day is marked on the 28th of May annually to create awareness about menstrual health across the world. Speaking at DEB Primary School in Nyeri Town, the Deputy Governor Dr. Caroline Wanjiro Karugu urged the Minister of Education to consider installing sanitary tower dispensers in all public schools for easy access. This would be one way uh, in which we can get a sustainable solution because the schooling population, about 15% of our girls, especially those who come from needy families and the slum areas, have struggled and suffered, especially during the pandemic, uh, because of lack of uh, sanitary towels. Dr. Karugu, who distributed sanitary pads to more than 250 girls from needy families in the Majengo and Witemere area, said 15% of girls in the county have no access to sanitary pads and some are taken advantage of sexually in order to get money to purchase the commodity. Some of them have fallen pregnant, some of them uh, are actually engaging into sexual activities uh, to get some small payments to buy sanitary towels and it's an activity that I would like uh, as the deputy governor of this county and as a woman to frown upon. During similar celebrations at Ngwewe Primary School in Ruiru Kiambu County, health stakeholders decried the stigma surrounding menstruation and lack of financial resources which forces underprivileged women and girls to improvise. Menstruation is not a costly affair. Every woman can handle it actually without spending a coin because we only need to tell them the properties of menstrual management materials as given by you and human rights and uh, every Kenyan can afford menstruation in a dignified manner and to experience it in a dignified manner without causing stigma and pain. Judy Sandia, the school head teacher, noted that observing menstrual hygiene is a daunting task for many girls whose parents hardly earn enough to allow for better healthy living standards. <laughs> wanarudi wanatuambia tena wanaomba teacher nimeenda kwa mwezi na sina pad namuuliza na pad situliwapatia ya kila mwezi anasema mama alichukua zangu na aliniambia moja nipatie dadangu na ule ule ako secondary na moja ni moja alichukua in Baringo county it emerged that social stigma and taboos surrounding menstrual hygiene prevent girls from attending school with calls for zero rating of sanitary towels Baringo County Public Service Board Vice Chair Dr. Stella Chebi, who spoke at Ngambo Girls in Baringo South, said menstruation is not only a reproductive health concern, but also a complex cultural, social, economic and educational issue. Menstruation is something that is not even talked about. And because of that, it becomes even very difficult for girls to approach their fathers, 
their brothers, their fathers, uh, about the need uh, to have sanitary towels. The menstruation hygiene awareness campaign continued on Saturday where a section of women in Samburu County donated sanitary towels to girls. Wasichana walikuwa wanajifunga sweta ama unaona wako wanakukaribi. Meanwhile, school-going girls in Bangladesh of Jomfu sub-county in Mombasa County are set to benefit from free sanitary towels for the next five months, courtesy of the Fujita Company that is spearheading the construction of phase two of the Dongo Kundu bypass project. <laughs> The company will donate approximately 12,000 sanitary towels with each of the four primary schools in the slum area expected to receive a donation of 500 sanitary pads every month. Statistics from the Ministry of Education published in 2018 indicate that some girls miss 13 learning lessons in a term because of their monthly periods. Purity Museo, Channel 1 News. Thank you, Brittany, for that report. Now, moving on, is that a desperate family in Dandora Phase 4, Nairobi County, is appealing to members of the public to help them trace their kin, a 72-year-old Samuel Agengo Ogol, who went missing on the 15th of March this year. Although the family reported the incident to the nearby Dandora police station, Samuel has not yet been found. Someone went missing after he had traveled from Kisumu to Dandora to spend a few days with his wife and kids only to disappear days later without a trace. The family says it's now two weeks since he went missing and nothing is forthcoming to his whereabouts. <laughs> Elsewhere, in Gakoyo village, Muranga County, two 17-year-olds, Masi Waidera and Clarin Jerry, who are in Form 2 and Form 3 respectively, disappeared mysteriously on Sunday, and their phones have been off since then. Bada ya kurudi fellowship, wa kurudi na uku tena, walikuwa wawili. Uyo mwigine na ito kirarini Jerry, muangi. Napaka reo, hawajarudi. Mi naomba, mahali wako, tafadhali warudi, ili tuwe na roho mzuri. Akioneka na mahali yako, mi na muabia, akuje, amalise shule, akimalisa, ataeda kutafuta kasi kama ni kasi anataka mi na mwabia on good faith o arudi nyubani na nitafurahi the Mokore and Yagadanga Secondary School students were last seen at ACK St. Mark's Kabui Church, where they are the youth members. Their families are now worried that their girls' safety and say could have fallen into wrong hands. Sasa, venye nasema ninge waomba masi, mkiwa na krari njeri, kwenye mko tafadhari nirudini nyubani, tunawatafuta, na tunawataka murudi, juu sasa mlikuwa mumeenda kanisani na mkasema vizuri mumekuja kanisani tusome lakini tena sijui ni nini liwashika mkaenda sasa kwenye tu mko na waomba masi na kiradini mkuje tunawagojea Now moving on is that police in Kiambu County are investigating the death of a man whose body was found buried in a shallow grave at Ndeya Market. Police say the border border operator had been reported missing days before the body was discovered. Following the discovery, angry residents torched houses and a lorry belonging to a man they accuse of being behind the death. The discovery of the body of a man who had gone missing in Ndeya has been met with ire by a section of area residents. The residents set on fire some houses and a lorry, accusing an area businessman of being behind the alleged kidnapping and murder of the Boda Boda rider. We are very agitated this morning that one of us has been cruelly murdered and buried behind one of the business 
owned by a foreigner whose uh, rockers have been suspecting he is involved in Hilia's act that has been happening in our village. And therefore, we want to ask the administration to take action as soon as possible. The body of the Boda Boda rider was found buried in a shallow grave at the Ndeya market. Kiambu County Police Commander said investigations are currently underway, even as he warned the public against taking the law into their own hands. The motorcycle has been recovered and uh, the body recovered. I want the people to exercise some restraint. The law will take its course and uh, we should do all necessary on our part. Meanwhile, police in Kayega have recovered seven cows believed to be part of 40 others, which had been stolen in Nakuru County. Police say they have also arrested some suspects in an effort to dismantle a cattle wrestling syndicate in Nakuru County. <laughs> Assistant Chief na OCS Mugeni ambayo tukona na Moses wake na wale wakotoka na kuru kwa mekuja jana usiku wakandamana waka kwa mshukua mmoja ambayo na hito Austin Pitute na tukamana ishukulikawa ngombe saba mmoja siku hapa kwa senda saizi Elsewhere, a man has been arrested in Ikolomani Kakamega County for allegedly defiling and killing his stepdaughter. Police say the seven-year-old girl went missing a week ago only for her body to be found dumped in a pit latrine. Postmortem results indicated that the girl had been defiled and sodomized before being strangled to death. <laughs> So that's the first segment of Channel One Lunchtime News. We shall be taking a short break, and when we get back, we shall be giving you more stories from the counties and also a tree planting exercise in our county. Equipment ndiyo mambo yote. Hapa tuko na fridge. Kodi yake ni CM. Tuko na gas cooker. Kodi yake ni CK. Tuko na TV. Kodi yake ni TV. Tuko na simu. Aina ya Samsung ni SM. Ama Oppo ni Oppo. My friend, mahali popoto na nitizama. Eka hizo kodi zake kisha utume kwa 4032353. 4032353 alafu utakuwa unaomoka na hizi visa kumbuka kwenye quickly ni bila bora zaidi kwa bei ya chini kwa chini Bank ime confirm pesa zimeingia congratulations Sam gari ni lako sasa Shukran Oi boss tunia change insurance yako nitumie kabla nijipange Wa insurance ya gari haiwezi kuwa transferred kwa mtu mwingine Sina habari na nikuulize he comprehensive insurance ina cover vitu gani? Comprehensive motor insurance ina cover gari linapoharibika wakati wa ajali pamoja na uharibifu wa mali ya mtu mwingine. Gari likibiwa au likichomeka. Pia ina cover passenger wa gari lako na passenger wa lile gari lingine kuna potokea ajali. Ha? Yaani umenisahau mimi kama driver? Dereva hakui cover na comprehensive insurance ila anajitafutia personal accident cover. Mm, umenichanua. Road Hata ni shugulike yoyo insurance, mitakudia gali kesho. Ok, sawa. Ya. Ujume huu umeletua kwako na IRA. IRA, bimabura kwa taifa. The greatest rally in the world is back in Kenya. Catch all the action of WRC Safari Rally live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1 from 24th to 27th June. 
See the world's best drivers navigate their machines on Kenya's rough terrain at breakneck speeds. Experience the thrills, adrenaline, drama, and excitement as man and machine do battle. Don't miss out. WRC Safari Rally, live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1. Your true sports partner. And welcome back to Channel One Lunchtime News. Now, business was brought to a standstill in Kitui town for two hours after two public transport circles clashed over parking in the bus terminus. Kinato Sako and Kinato Prestige are said to be wrangling over the ownership of the bus park situated in the heart of Kitui town. Drivers and conductors from both circles demonstrated and closed the entrance to the bus terminus and it took the intervention of police officers to restore order. Initially, the two circles were united and operated in harmony before parting ways due to business rivalry. And on to the county news wrap where Gatanga constituency in Moranga County now boasts a new sub county called Idanga Kakuzi that will cater for residents of two wards, Itanga and Kakuzi Bitumberi. Elsewhere, sewerage management in Nairobi County has been boosted by the donation of equipment from the Ministry of Water, Sanitization and Irrigation and other development partners. In Nairobi County, the Nairobi Metropolitan Services has received a boost of operational vehicles and sewer flushing units worth 625 million shillings from the Ministry of Water, Sanitation and Irrigation to help them in handling logistics effectively. We need to be able to give the service as an MS uh, with more efficiency. Uh, it is important for us to give you the kind of support that we are giving you. Elsewhere in Muranga County, Getanga constituency now boasts a new sub county called Idanga Kakuzi that will cater for residents for of two wards, Idanga and Kakuzi, Mitumbiri, who have been traveling for long distances in search of services. The headquarters of newly created Idanga Kakuzi Administration Unit will be located at Kaguku Shopping Center. Tulikuwa na eh, nagaramika kwenda pande ya Gatanga, pahali ungeli pia shilingi kama 300 400 kwa safari na kama unatakikana uwe gatanga saa mbili lazima uwe umerauka saa moja na nusu ndio uanze safari bila hayo lazima utachelewa a woman who gave birth to quadruplets at Dika Level 5 Hospital in Kiambu County is appealing to well-wishers to assist her in cash and kind. Maxine Nyawira, who hails from Wittedia and Julia, says she is overwhelmed by expenses as she is a five-year-old child beside the four infants. <laughs> What a pleasant story for her, for Maxine. That is four bundles of joy and we wish mother and children well. Let's go back to our first story where uncertainty looms over the venue of this year's Madraka Day celebrations as the organizers grapple with the soaring COVID-19 cases in Kisumu County. State House spokesperson Kanzedena has revealed that talks are ongoing between the Ministry of Health and local leaders to settle on an ideal venue between the newly built Jomo Kenyatta International Stadium or the state lodge in Kisumu. Already planned to have members of the public follow the event at three different venues within the lakeside town have been scrapped as part of containment measures. 
President Huru Kenyatta is expected in Kisumu tomorrow, and on Monday he will be joined by Burundian President Evarist Ndayishimiye, who is expected in the country for a two-day visit. Achola Simon has got this report. Kumba kuna mazungumzo ambayo bado yanaendelea. Unafahamu vyema ya kwamba manake nyinyi ni wanahabari wa hapa Nyanza. Unafahamu ya kwamba vigezo ama maambukizi ya corona kidogo yako juu. Kwa hivyo bado kuna mawasiliano ambayo yanaendelea. Na najua pia gavana wa kaunti hii pamoja na kamishna wa kaunti hii wamekuwa wakizungumza mara kwa mara na wanahabari. Kwa hivyo endapo swala hili litahitajika kwamba tutaibili tufanye sherehe hiyo hapa ikulu basi itafanywa hapa ikulu. Lakini ikiwa itawezekana kwamba iwe katika uwanja na uga huu wa Kisumu basi itaweza kufanyika. Kwa hivyo swala hilo kama nilivyoweza kukueleza mengi zaidi kabla ya siku kumalizika tutakuwa tumeweza kuwasiliana nanyi kupitia uh, uh, mitandao yetu ama mitandao ya kijamii ama kuwapigia simu. Uh, ningeweza pia tu kutoa sisitizo ambalo tunataka kulisisitiza zaidi na zaidi tafadhalini hata jana kutoka ikulu tuliweza kuona viongozi wa eneo hili la Nyanza wakiweza kutoa sisimko na kusisitiza zaidi ndio kuna mhemko kuna mahanjam kuna furaha kuna bashasha ambayo na, inakuja na ujio wa rais katika kaunti hii lakini tungependa kuomba ya kwamba tukaetini nyumbani runinga zetu za kuaminika na za kutajika zitakuwa zinapeperusha mbashasha kila kitu mbashara kila kitu uh, kwa hivyo hutakuwa unakosa chochote ni kile kwamba utakuwa huko tu katika katika um, uga wa michezo lakini utaweza kuona kila kitu jinsi kinavyoendelea kwa hivyo hisani yetu ni kwenu nyinyi wenyeji wa county ni furaha yetu kuwa hapa katika eneo hili la Nyanza lakini tunaomba kwa sababu ya janga la corona tunaomba ya kwamba tafadhalini tubaki ni nyumbani na zaidi ya yote kusisitiza ya kwamba tufuate maagizo yaliyotolewa na Wizara ya Afya ili kuhakikisha ya kwamba tunapunguza maambukizi hayo and Atola Simon will be giving us more details on the Madraka Day celebrations. And remember to follow those celebrations and the build-up live on KBC Channel 1 Television, Radio Taifa, the English Service, and Radio Mayenga. Let's move on to politics where the Amani National Congress Party has rolled out a recruitment drive in western counties in a bid to strengthen its grassroots structures in preparation for next year's polls. Speaking in Vihiga County, National Party Chairman Kelvin Lunani said they have embarked on the exercise to ensure their presidential flag bearer Musalia Mudavadi clinches the seat in 2022. The National Party Chairman added that the party is in talks with other political parties to form coalitions ahead of the polls that are slated for August next year kuweza kuandikisha wanachama mnavotambua mheshimiwa msalia mdavadi ako katika kinyanganyiro cha urais mwaka 2022 na kwa hivyo hii ni baadhi ya mikakati ambayo anaweka huku kukiwa nyumbani kuna umuhimu wa kuweka mikakati kisa sawa awachie majenerali wake hawa ndio watalinda doria katika eneo la vihiga kuhakikisha ya kwamba vihiga inatoa ma MCAs wote katika chama cha NC inatoa governor katika chama cha NC na wabunge wote mpaka seneta wa kike na seneta wa kiume kwa hivyo la muhimu tunapoelekea mbele ni kujulisha watu wa vihiga ya kwamba hivi meli shango wananga tumeweza kusomozia mambo ya chama uh, ikiwemo recruitment ya wanachama wengi ambao tumepanga mikakati alafu pia tumeweza kusumuzia jambo la zile activities ambazo tutakuwa tukifanya kwa chama thank you thank you And time to get the sport and Mohammed Sharif and Salam Moksin's second half goals handed Egyptian giant Al Akli their seventh Total Calf Super Cup title after beating Renaissance Barkan 2 0 at the Jasim Bin Hamad Stadium in Doha last night. It was the second continental title for coach Pizzo Mosimane since joining the Cairo Giants in October last year. But Remember that KBC Channel 1 is your home of African football. They still enter club semi finals and the final to be broadcast. Now,
Kenyan athletes dominated the Doha Diamond League meeting in Qatar barely two months before the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games in Japan. And even through the scintillating performance by the various Kenyan athletes, the eyes could not fail to capture youngster Beatrice Chabet's performance in the 3,000 meters, which earned her the prize of the best female athlete of the meet. Beatrice Chebet's standard star started field of athletes to win the 3,000 meters at the Doha Diamond League, shaving 22 seconds off her personal best time. The 21-year-old clocked 8 minutes 27.49 seconds to win the race ahead of four other Kenyan athletes, including Helen Obiri, who lined up in positions 2 to 5 respectively. The other Kenyan, Eva Cherono, finished 8th. Can't do anything about it. It's Chebet, though, who's going to take a massive scalp. Helen Obiri fades over the last 100 meters and it's Beatrice Chipet who takes the win the 21 year old massive performance from her 827 that's a huge personal best Faith Kipiagon was another Kenyan who proved too fast for the 800 meters field winning the two lap race in 1 minute 58.26 seconds her time was one second short of her personal best time but was enough to beat Gwale Natoya of Jamaica and Arafi Rababe of Morocco who were the other podium finishers Nora Geruto was not left behind in the stars of the night in Doha, winning the 3,000 meters steeple chase. She clocked nine minutes flat to finish two seconds ahead of Abebe Mekides of Ethiopia and Yavi Winfred of Bahrain. Compatriot Haivin Kiyeng finished fourth and Rosflin Chepngetich ninth. The Kenyan men were also at their very best. Timothy Cheriot had the pace and power in the final lap to win a tight 1500 meters in 3 minutes 30.48 seconds, while compatriot Bethwell Birgen and Vincent Kibet could not keep up as they finished 5th and 7th respectively. The 800 meters saw a 1-2 finish for Kenya, with Cliff Kinyamal just edging Ferguson Rotich who had to settle for the silver. Kinyamal clocked 1 minute 43.91 seconds to finish just ahead of Rotich who clocked 1 minute 44.45 seconds. Apart from the Kenyans, Jamaican Shelley and Fraser Price was also part of the Stars of the Night, winning the women 100 meters. That's our lunchtime sport for today. Thank you very much for being with us over the past one hour. And I want to thank also the team that put together this bulletin and also our transmission team. My name is Daniel Wahome. Our sign language interpreter has been Byron Abuli. Coming up next, Dunia Wikihi, hosted by Isaac Lemoka. Have a good afternoon. and Fashion College with branches in Nairobi, Eldoret, Thika and Meru. Did you know that we are a Tibet approved institution? We offer courses in fashion design, interior design in soft furnishing, event decoration, flower arrangement, event planning, hairdressing, barbering and dreadlocks, beauty therapy, makeup, nail technology, spa massages, teaching skills, TOT, solo business management and many more. Register now and visit our website on www.verabeautycollege.com. You can also call on 0725-923-550 Nairobi Branch, 0728-087-689 Eldoret Branch, 0722-227428 Thicker Branch, 0725-000. 706 Meru Branch, Vera Beauty and Fashion College, a TVET approved institution.
Je, umeumoka? Kama hujaumoka kwenye Quickbin ndio mambo yote. Hapa tuko na fridge, kodi yake ni CM. Tuko na gas cooker, kodi yake ni CK. Tuko na TV, kodi yake ni TV. Tuko na simu aina ya Samsung ni SM ama Oppo ni Oppo. My friend, mahali popote unanitizama. Eka hizo kodi zake kisha utume kwa 4032353. 4032353 alafu utakuwa unaomoka na hizi bidhaa kumbuka kwenye quickwin ni bila bora zaidi kwa bei ya chini kwa chini tonight on kbc channel 1 what was up with that by the way how can you call someone 25 times in a day was heaven bunny na ya gamene si i even bought you this milking most done because of that issue bunny is let me a bit why you bringing her like that That is the time of weakness in a boy's hand, okay? So if he doesn't want it, eh, let her happen in sharp pay. So basically what you say to Jay is Adindo was not 247 out of 250. Actually it's 248. Who oh, is laughing now? <laughs> Where I tried, he couldn't even spell a simple word like nikumbum. Spelling nikumbum. Classmates, every Saturday on KBC. Nam, huyu ambao mtazamaji na karibu sana katika makala mengine ya dunia wiki hii. Makala ambayo yanaangazia taarifa za kimataifa kutoka kila pembe kote ulimwenguni. Kumbuka taarifa hizi zimeandaliwa na kuletwa kwako na shirika la utangazaji humu nchini KBC na shirika la Xinhua kutoka China. Katika makala ya Jumahili tutaanzia katika Jamhuri ya Kidemokrasia ya Kongo ambako vifo vitano vilithibitishwa kufuatia mlipuko wa volkeno katika wilaya ya Goma huku wakazi waliokuwa wameondoka kwenye makazi yao wakijiandaa kurejea. Hali kadhalika Israel na Hamas wakubaliana kukomesha mapigano huku taasisi za kimataifa na nchi zikitoa wito wa juhudi zaidi za kimataifa kukomesha hatua ya Israel ya kukaa kwenye maeneo ya Wapalestina. Tutangazia baraza la afya duniani ambalo la kutana na kuangazia kukomesha janga la COVID-19. Pamoja na taarifa hiyo janga la COVID-19 laendelea kuathiri sehemu mbalimbali kote duniani huku juhudi zikitekelezwa kulidhibiti ikiwemo utoaji chanjo. Ni baadhi tu ya taarifa mtazamaji ambazo nimekuandalia katika kipindi dunia wiki hii keti papo ulipo siende mbali kadi tamati. Karibu mimi ni Isaac Lemoka. Na moja kwa moja tuanze na taarifa yetu kuu ya mkini watu 15 waliaga dunia kufuatia mlipuko wa volkeno kwenye mlima Nyiragongo katika jimbo la Kivu kaskazini kwenye jamhuri ya kidemokrasi ya Kongo kwa mujibu wa maafisa nchi. <tos> Msemaji wa serikali Patrick Muyaya alisema kuwa watu 15 waliaga dunia walipokuwa wakitoroka kutokana na tishio la lava. Watu tisa waliaga dunia baada ya lori kupinduka huku waathiriwa wengine wanne wakiwa wafungwa waliojaribu kutoroka kwenye gereza la Munzenze huko Goma kwa mujibu wa msemaji huyo akiongeza kusema kuwa watu wawili zaidi walichomeka hadi kufa. Muyaya aliwahimiza wakazi kujiepusha na shughuli zisizo muhimu kwani milipuko ya volkano wakati eneo hilo huenda ikasababisha uharibifu zaidi. Ndege za helikopta za ujumbe wa hifadhi amani wa umoja wa mataifa nchini humo zilifanya ziara za angani kutathmini hali. Maafisa wa eneo hilo walisema kuwa lava hiyo ilisita kutoka mwendo wa saa kumi Jumapili alfajiri viungani mwa goma huku wakazi wakianza kurejea kwenye makazi yao wakati wa usiku. Wakati huo huo wakazi wa sehemu ya mashariki ya nchi hiyo waliokuwa wametorokea nchi jirani ya Rwanda anda kufuatia kulipuka kwa volkeno hiyo walianza kurejea nyumbani baada ya lava kukoma kutiririka Ikao cha 74 cha baraza la afya duniani kiliandaliwa kukariri dharura 
ya kukomesha janga la COVID-19 na kuzuia janga jingine ili kujenga ulimwengu wenye afya, usalama na usawa zaidi. Zaidi ya mwaka mmoja baada ya janga la COVID-19 kuzuka, visa vya maambukizi kote duniani vimefikia zaidi ya milioni 168 huku zaidi ya watu milioni 3.5 wakiaga dunia kulingana na takwimu za shirika la afya duniani WHO. Nchi ya India inaendelea kuathirika zaidi huku zaidi ya vifo laki tatu vikiripotiwa na zaidi ya visa milioni 27 vikinakiliwa. Zaidi ya wahudumu mianne wa afya wameaga dunia kutokana na ugonjwa huo nchini India. Kwenye hotuba wakati wa ufunguzi wa kikao hicho mkurugenzi mkuu wa WHO Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus alitoa wito kwa nchi wanachama kuwapa chanjo takriban asilimia kumi ya jumla ya idadi ya watu katika kila nchi kufikia mwezi Septemba na takriban asilimia 30 kufikia mwisho wa mwaka huu kumaanisha kwamba watu milioni mbili hamsini zaidi katika nchi za mapato ya chini na kadri watapata chanjo katika muda wa miezi minne. Mkutano huo uliangazia juhudi za kukabiliana na janga hilo kufikia sasa. Kikao cha baraza hilo ambalo ndilo asasi kuu ya kufanya maamuzi katika shirika la WHO kinaandaliwa hadi tarehe mosi mwezi ujao na kuhudhuriwa na jumbe kutoka kote duniani na wanachama walioshirikishwa, wachunguzi, wawakilishi waalikwa, wa umoja wa mataifa na mashirika mengine ya kiserikali na wadau wasio wa kiserikali. Kwingineko mkurugenzi wa shirika la WHO barani Ulaya Hans Klug alihimiza tahadhari licha ya kupungua kwa asilimia stini e kwa visa vya maambukizi na vifo kutokana na COVID-19 barani humo. Nikiripoti ya dunia wiki hii jina langu ni Marion Bosira. Na tukiangazia sasa taarifa kuhusiana na COVID-19 nchi na maeneo mbalimbali yameendelea kutoa chanjo ili kudhibiti janga la virusi vya corona vilivyosababisha madhara makubwa sana duniani. Juhudi za utoaji chanjo nchini India zinaendelea ili kudhibiti chamko la pili mbaya zaidi huku chanjo za Covishield, Covaxin na ile ya Sputnik V kutoka Urusi zikitolewa. Misri ilipokea shehena ya kwanza ya malighafi ya kutayarisha chanjo ya Kichina ya Sinovac pamoja na shehena ya chanjo ya Sinopharm kwa mjibu wa ubalozi wa China nchini humo. Wizara ya Afya ya Misri ilikuwa imesema kuwa nchi hiyo itaanza kutayarisha chanjo hizo mwezi ujao na kwa mavipimo milioni mbili vya kwanza itatayarishwa katika kiwanda cha bidhaa cha biolojia na chanjo nchini humo. Na shehena ya vipimo milioni moja vya chanjo ya Sinovac ambavyo Cambodia ilinunua kutoka kwa kampuni ya Kichina ya Sinovac Biotech iliwasilishwa nchini humo. Nchi hiyo ilipokea zaidi ya vipimo milioni sita vya chanjo kutoka China na mpango wa Covax wa shirika la afya duniani zaidi ya watu milioni 2.25 wamepata chanjo nchini humo kwa mjibu wa wizara ya afya na serikali ya Malawi ilitetea hatua yake ya kuharibu chanjo za AstraZeneca ikisema uamuzi huo uliafikiwa ili kudumisha imani ya watu katika chanjo licha ya wito wa shirika la WHO kwamba nchi hiyo ilihifadhi chanjo hizo zilizofikia muda wa mwisho wa matumizi Serikali iliharibu vipimo 1019610. Na, na msemaji wa serikali ya Libya Ahmad Hamuda alisema kuwa nchi hiyo ilipokea vipimo 1150 vya chanjo ya AstraZeneca huku zaidi ya watu 1160 wakiwa wamepata kipimo cha kwanza cha chanjo nchini humo. Nikiripoti ya dunia wiki hii jina langu ni Miriam Mwangi. Mtazamaji pamoja na taarifa hiyo baadhi ya nchi na maeneo mbalimbali yameendelea kulegeza kanuni za kuzuia kusambaa kwa virusi vya corona ila kwa tahadhari kufuatia kupungua kwa visa vya maambukizi na vifo. So I regret to have to announce that as of tomorrow our public schools will be closed. In other words to all parents who are hearing this now there is no school tomorrow. Mea wa jiji la New York Bill De Blasio alisema kuwa shule zote za msingi jijini humo zitafunguliwa kikamilifu mwezi Septemba. Shule za umma jijini humo zilifungwa mwezi Machi mwaka uliopita kufuatia chamko la COVID-19 huku baadhi zikifunguliwa tena mwezi Oktoba. Na mikahawa nchini Kuwait ilianza tena kuhudumia wateja baada ya kuwa kwa miezi kadhaa 